everyone. Welcome to Giving Up the Ghost. This is Jazz. I am single on my own right now. Pod partner Cher is at home. So I just wanted to intro this week's episode. It's just a little brief deviation from what we normally do. We're still trying to figure out a recording schedule and hopefully this Friday we've got some interviews lined up. That being said, don't want to leave you all in the dirt and dust and disappoint you without having a weekly episode we try to do that if we can time permitting and don't want anybody thinking that we're on a covidcation again in any event so this week's episode is primarily a compilation of a few uh, interviews that we've had over the last couple of years awesome interviews we appreciate all our guests and the time and the honesty that they give to us when they come on to the podcast and discuss with uh, ourselves the horrific events that have happened. It's not an easy thing to do, but at the same time, I think a lot of people appreciate when they've had experiences that it is nice that they're able to speak with other people who have an understanding and appreciate and don't judge, which is the most important part. So this week's episode is basically a reincarnation episode, if you will. Uh, We speak with five people from various parts of our uh, interviewing. We're not interviewers. We just like, you know, to drink and swear and As you know, the show, if you listen to it, we'd like to have a good time and life is too serious and a lot of these stories are very, very, very serious and topics. So, you know, we have a little, uh, a little levity, a little humor, and we like to have a good time and put people at ease when they come to talk to us. So enjoy the next five stories from our episode called Paranormal Hauntings on Portage Avenue with Sharice. Now we were able to find Sharice through Facebook and she was able to come forward and discuss with us some of the happenings uh, to her young family in a very famous building that had a tragic fire back in the late 20s on Portage Avenue and it's still in use, they reconstructed, but I think the people who burned to death in the building have returned or refused to vacate. So please check out that story and listen to it. Again, this is from our episode back in February 2021. Paranormal Hauntings on Porridge Avenue. Enjoy. To, um, it'll be a year and a half uh, in December. It'll be two years. Okay. Oh, okay. All right. Yeah. And what kind of things did you experience when you lived on the second floor? On the second floor, mm-hmm. there was doors opening by themselves. And one time he kind of checked it out to see if it was vibrations. Mm-hmm. But it, like, it wasn't. Okay. So... Right. It was, and then in my one closet door would open up by itself, and then I felt a presence in there a lot, so I had to close the door and keep it closed. Right, right. And my fiance would notice closet the closet doors opening as well. Okay. And my son just never stayed in his old room for longer period of times. Okay. Right, right. So something freaked him out same with my other son when i'd have him visit he Mm -hmm. would just get freaked out he'd you'd see he'd come up from that room and then you you could tell he was scared okay just not feeling right yeah yeah. you can yeah like it was just um it's peculiar and my son never slept in there for a long period of time i couldn't get even get him to sleep in there okay no way and yeah and then one time i walked through a black mist and it was like crazy creepy and i felt like i felt like a really cold air like i walked right past right through a big wind turbine or something it was creepy (laughs) and that was like i've never heard of that before that's freaky yeah yeah it was it was spooky and like a lot of the times i couldn't keep my door open when i'd go to bed Mm -hmm. because the hallway i felt like there was something like a presence in the hallway even when I would turn off um the hallway light to go to bed mm-hmm. and I felt myself having to run oh yeah, yeah. That, I walked yeah. oh my there. god that's the worst yeah. the next segment that you're about to hear is just a snippet of a few really really strange stories that happened to one of our guests Maria in her hometown at that time of Morris Manitoba So this interview is just one of the couple stories that she was able to share with us. And it was from our interview we did with her. You can listen to the full episode, Creepy Morris Manitoba Mystery. It's uh, it's a little chilling to say the least. So sit back, relax, and listen to Maria tell us of her scary encounter. Enjoy. I was fixing 
Texas and speaker wires. Now I've got the details, but I have to speak to the speaker wires. And my mom walks into the room. We're having a night, really nice conversation. And in the corner of my eye, I see something moving. Now I have this, this living room chair set up in my corner and a dark knitted sweater draped over top. Mm -hmm. And what started coming out was a fist and it came out very straight and just very slow and determined. Mm -hmm. It stopped a little bit and then it went right back. Ew. My mom, she kept on talking. <laughs> I asked her, did you not see that? She's like, oh, you saw it too. Oh, oh my God. Yeah. Um, it was, it was very scary. It was, it was nerve wracking. Oh, for sure. The next interview was shared to us by our friend Tommy, a longtime friend of mine, a former Winnipeg resident who now lives in BC, and we've had him on a few times. This interview was really, really cool, discussing his times while he was a resident, but then it was like his lifelong passion to help other people with regards to places and uh, just to help them out. So uh, like a group home situation. So this next story was just a, a segment, just a snippet, a teaser, if you will, with our interview with Tommy. And it's from our podcast episode called Ghostly Footsteps in the Dark on Anderson Avenue. Please enjoy. A boy that um, was there um, after I had left, he... Um, relayed this to the staff mm -hmm. about a situation. He actually had um, massive burns on his arms and his back because he uh, was pushing himself against a radiator and he wouldn't stop. And oh. it was there were such bad burns from the heat Ooh, of the shit. radiator in the middle of winter. But they were saying, why? Why would you do that? Why would you do that? Mm -hmm. He said, because of the face. Oh, God. And oh. they said, what? What face? What are you talking about? And he talked about how he woke up, he needed to go to the bathroom, so he's walking to the bathroom. It's pitch black in the in the hallway. Mm -hmm. And as he's walking past the door that leads to the downstairs, um, the, the stairs downstairs, he sees a green glow emanating from the other side of the door. Oh. And he's like, what the heck is that? So he opens the door up. Mm -hmm. And he said that there was nothing but a huge face with an open mouth, like a, a person screaming. Oh, God. And it moved towards him, and he backed up into this radiator, oh, and oh. it just kept coming towards him. So he kept pushing back, and that's how he got the burns on his arms and his and his back. And and then the thing went right past, like went yeah, through yeah. him yeah, and, yeah. Yeah. and through the wall and everything. But he was letting out this huge scream, so the staff runs upstairs, and there he is, leaning against this radiator, screaming, oh my God. urinating in the hallway. I guess he's so scared. Yeah, wow. and this is a tough sixteen-year-old kid. Yeah, I'm sure. That's seen a lot of, you know, Bullshit. stuff. Yeah, yeah. yeah. This next clip that you're about to hear came from our episode that we had last year, that we affectionately entitled "Get the Fuck Out of Our House" or "My House." Uh, in regards to people that had some uh, stories of encounters of things that were still currently happening into the homes that they are living in right now as we speak. The one segment from this episode, uh, we were able to speak with Cindy. Cindy approached us, and actually it was her husband who put her up to it, uh, and he had said that she's got some very, very cool and creepy stories. And more specifically, it's about a little boy who perished, and he is still residing in their house with them. So sad, very descript, uh, the incidences that happen with them, and currently are still happening from what I understand. In any event, this is Cindy telling her story on Get the F Out of My House episode, and sit back, relax, and enjoy. And again, as always, if you care to look back at our volume of episodes, you can listen for the full episode if you go back on any one of your pod playing apps. Enjoy. In my house, I told you about the flowers in the vase. Yes. Um, when we did our... I had told my neighbor across the back lane about it. And um, which which in a town? Which area are you in? Transcona. Oh, you are still. Okay. Yeah, I remember years ago talking with him, and he said that you guys are out that way. Okay. Yeah, yeah, we're still in Transcona. <laughs> so she. Hey, Transcona. 
<laughs> Yay, right? No, no pink flamingos in my yard, though. No. I have. <laughs> do you? <laughs> I do, yeah. They're not the cheesy ones, though. They're nice ones. <laughs> oh, okay. Well, that's allowed. <laughs> but, yeah, my neighbor across the back lane from me, um, I was telling her about some of the things that went on in our house, and uh, she told me, filled me in about our neighbor beside us, okay. that before we moved in, um, the lady that lived in our house before us used to babysit the kid that lived that used to live next door to us, and that family had also moved. Okay. And apparently, uh -huh. he passed away in the garage. Oh. They oh. had um, a wood stove there, and it didn't start on fire, but they had carbon monoxide poisoning, and he oh. he passed away in the in the with carbon monoxide poisoning. In his own garage or in your in garage? His own garage? In his own garage. And how, oh, how old okay. would he have been? Um, from what I understand, he was around the five-ish, four okay. or five age. Oh, that's so sad. Oh. And the lady in my house used to babysit him all the time. That's his happy place. Yeah. So he's at our place quite regularly. He uh, plays jokes quite regularly. And how long have you lived in your house now? Oh, 20 years. Okay. <laughs> About 20 years, I think it is now. Okay. Um, he's done things. Stacy used to come in the house and... and we have a, a fridge in the garage because we've always had some kind of a business where we vending yeah, yeah, or right. something, right? Yeah. So we've always had a fridge in the garage, and he'll come in after work some nights and say, "What were you doing outside? It wasn't outside. The fridge would be open." Oh. oh. Seriously, I'm gonna go out in the middle of the night and leave yeah. the fridge open. Yeah, I know. Open. You're like, no, pass. Yeah, right not so much. I value mm. sleep. Thank you. And the thing about a fridge, it's got the suction and everything, so it's not like a cupboard left open. Like a fridge, you've no. got to pull on it. And then it's purposely not like a leave it. Going in there and yeah. It open or, yeah. 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 So the fridge would be left open. The fridge would be left open in the house. Um, things would get moved, and I, there's things that I had lost for like three months, and that, that would show up on the kitchen table one day out of the blue. Hmm. Just out of the blue, there it is. Um, we've had noises where you swear somebody has just ran into the outside of your house, a big loud bang, oh. and yeah. death will go outside. Nothing. There's nothing oh, going on out there. Nobody mm -hmm. around. Um, and since I started with the beating, the the psychic that I saw, also the card reader or the flame reader, yeah. said that your little. How did she put? I don't know. It was the little boy anyway. Mm -hmm. The little boy at your house wants you to know that he really likes your beads. What? Wow. I just got a chill on that one. Wow. She told me that, and it, I found that really funny because we will be sitting in, in our basement watching TV, and you know, you know how when something falls on the floor, it'll drop off your desk or whatever, and yep. you hear the ding, 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 ding. Mm -hmm. Okay, that happens. We're sitting downstairs watching TV, and out of the blue, it sounds like a bunch of beads have fallen off my off my desk or off my yep. workbench and you hear it ting 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 and it kind of rolls right uh -huh. you can go upstairs there is nothing on the floor wow nothing. well yeah and what what would you have that would go like that too like i mean right? it's not like you have yeah. yeah i mean my beads yeah i could see it if i had left them close to the edge and they fell sure if something i don't know wind i don't know something yeah. but yeah. there's nothing and there's nothing on the floor and there's no explanation mm. um you know in basements how you have the rafters and People like Stacy will like to put fluorescent light bulbs above the rafters, oh, yeah. above the other rooms. Sure. He takes the fluorescent lights and he puts them in the rafters in our laundry room. Like just to store, store Just them. to store yeah. them. Uh -huh. mm -hmm. So we're sitting in the basement one night watching TV and we hear a loud smash. Uh, well, oh, no. the lights are over here Yeah. in the rafters all the way back. Okay. We go into the laundry room when we hear this loud smash, and mm -hmm. they have not just come out and down, they have come out around the corner and over there. Oh. And would you believe, one of them broke, two of them didn't. Weird. Oh. Fluorescent bulbs break oh, really easy. easy. Yeah. I don't yeah. know. And well, they well, so shatter playing everywhere. With them. They do. Yeah, he's playing with yeah. them. Yeah. He, uh, lightsabers. Yeah, right? <laughs> yeah. Lightsabers on them. Yeah. yeah the that's... one that landed in the laundry basket was the one that was broken. The two that landed mm. on the concrete floor were not odd yeah now was this like what you're describing right now with these little movements and stuff was this like after you renovated or just constantly all the time most of this has happened since the renovation he actually when we he was pretty active before we started the renovation mm -hmm. and then when we did the renovation he was gone for a while 
And then after it was finished, he started coming back. Oh, maybe he didn't like the noise. Then. I don't think he did. The first time that I ever saw him, that I feel so sad. Like this, yeah. you know, that just That's makes me so sad. A little boy, right? The first yeah. time, and he's this, confused and obviously not alone. He obviously loves you guys. The first time that I ever noticed this this kid, I was sitting downstairs watching TV, and I have a bookshelf that would be to the right, right, <laughs> and I'd never put books on it. I used to collect Barbies and porcelain dolls. Okay. So they were all on this shelf. Mm -hmm. And I'm watching TV and I'm reading... Well, I'm, I've am i got the TV on and I'm reading a book and I kept seeing something to my left. It would just be a little movement. Yes. And I'd look and uh -huh. there's nothing there. What the hell? So I'd turn back and I'd start reading again and I'd see it again. Mm -hmm. And it kept... Your, um, your person that's in this location right now, she doesn't like my shirt. No? No, because there's something going on with the back of my shirt and the back of my head. Really? Yes. <laughs> she's, kind of, she's kind of touching my shirt. She doesn't like it. I'm sorry. I didn't mean to steal your thunder. I'm just feeling, That's okay. I'm just feeling these <laughs> sensations. I'm wearing the shirt you made me share. Oh, no way. This is what I'm saying. Oh, really? Like, I'm, <laughs> I'm getting some really... Okay, continue. <laughs> She'll... She's not harmful, at least she hasn't been, so we should be okay. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I think the shirt's kind of throwing her off. Could be. I'm sorry. Could be. Could be the whole idea of what... <laughs> but yeah. anyway, yeah. Sorry, sorry. Like, don't tell my stories. He's, right? uh... Yeah, right? Uh -huh. Yeah. The, um, the bookshelf, though, he would keep popping his head out of the bookshelf, and it, it took three or four of the pop out and back before I could catch... And I'd look fast enough, and I actually caught a glimpse. Mm. And that was when I, because that's when I said to my neighbor what was going on, and I thought that, it, I felt that it was a young boy. Mm. And that's when yeah. she told me about the boy that had died. But yeah, he, he, so plays, he like plays with me. Yeah, he was playing peekaboo peek on, the, on the bookshelf. Have yeah. you ever tried yeah. to find any information on that at all? Or? No. 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 I, I mean, I don't mind him. Yeah. But if you had a name at least, right? Like yeah. it'd be nice if you had a name. Yeah. Yeah. I've actually had to tell him to stop once. I was, Steph was out of town. Um, yeah, he was out of town and I had went to bed with a migraine and China was with him out of town. And I kept feeling like, like somebody's flicking the back, the side of my head while I'm laying in bed. Mm -hmm. And I thought, well, maybe there's a moth. Mm -hmm. And I turn on the lights and I'm looking and there's nothing and I go back to bed, shut off the light, kept feeling this flicking again. Okay, lady, go away. <laughs> this is this is what I'm feeling. Really? Okay, that's just weird. In about three or four spots. <laughs> it's it started okay. back before. Wow. <sighs> She's good. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> I'm okay. You can, You're okay. okay. I'm okay. You're okay. Be it's okay. okay. No, it's okay. I'm just letting you know. I'm okay. It's okay. Yeah. It's all right. Um, uh, anyway, that night I kept hearing, feeling the flicking, and there was uh, never any, um, never any moth or anything. So I finally I pulled the blankets up and I put them all around my head, and I could still feel the the flick. And I said, I thought, okay, enough is enough. And then I finally I pulled the blankets right over my head. Mm -hmm can't breathe under there but anyway I pulled the blankets <laughs> over my head and your feet were covered and my feet were covered obviously <laughs> <laughs> can't have them sticking out don't <laughs> put your foot over the side of the bed <laughs> you never know what's going to grab you from under under the platform bed right oh god <laughs> no yeah no kidding <laughs> yeah so Just enough of a ledge to yeah so anyway i um i finally had pulled the blankets right up over my head and the next thing that happened was i heard a big poof and you see a flash <laughs> like 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 fire and I opened my eyes pulled the blanket off and opened my eyes and it, I had a vision of fire okay. enough is enough I am trying to get some sleep knock it off and immediately gone yeah eh? it was just uh. gone just like that and it hmm. was it was yeah he was just playing yeah me and Cher are so appreciative for all the people that have approached us and willing to tell us their story the thing is, when you've had an encounter with a spirit or a ghost, something negative or positive, something mind-boggling that you can't wrap your head around it, it's really hard to be able to convey it to people that don't have that experience or understanding or just want to pretend that things don't exist because they themselves maybe cannot wrap their minds around to what has possibly just happened to them. With uh, myself and Cher, speak on her behalf, we call ourselves 
optimistic skeptics. If you've listened to any of our episodes before, you'll know that's what we call ourselves because we've had enough of our own experiences to realize that, yeah, there is something more to it. So your experience may not have have happened to us, but we totally get it. This next interview uh, from uh, Ghosts of Gimli Part 1, we speak with Judith. Now, Judith is very much an advocator of something on the other side. She herself has had uh, put together like a town hall meeting of sorts where people would come out and speak freely. And uh, it's very cathartic when people are able to speak of their experiences without judgment. And it goes a long way. And we truly love and appreciate everybody who's contributed and felt comfortable enough with us to come onto the show and tell us what their story is. And again, in saying that, if you ever have any stories, please reach out to us. And again, no judgment. And we gladly share them with other people. Enjoy this next story with Judith. Thank you. The one that scared the heck out of me, though, I will say that. And it was more because it's your mom instinct. So um, when you come into the house, if you keep going past the kitchen, you're into the, the big living room, and there's another set of stairs that goes up to the master bedroom. And then my daughter, who was one when we moved into the house, um, has her bedroom across from us, and then there's the big bathroom. So the bathroom is the length of her bedroom, so it's oh, okay. really long, really mm-hmm. big bathroom. Mm-hmm. And I was taking a bath one night, and she was maybe 16, 17 months old at the time. So again, that's that first year we were in here. Right. And hadn't really climbed out of the, the crib. So I'm in the tub, I'm relaxing. And if you, you know, if you're lying in the tub, you look to your left, you can see clearly the door and the door opened up a little bit and I saw my daughter and I'm thinking oh "Oh my god oh crap she's learned how to get out of the yeah so I I, I'm going okay sweetie hold on don't don't go anywhere because it's pitch black in the hallway Mm -hmm. and there's a set of stairs down into the living room I thought if she walks the wrong way she's gonna go flying down these stairs yeah so I, I, I even think I cleared the tub. I just <laughs> leaped out of the tub. Ooh. And then she shut the door on me, and I thought, oh, you little booger. Yeah. <laughs> so I get to the door. I go on to the landing, and the doors are side by side. Her bedroom door and the bathroom door are side by side. Okay. And her door was closed, and she's not on the landing. So I'm thinking, okay. So I'm thinking she's on it's the other fa- side of the door. I hear a giggle. Oh, yeah. And I'm thinking, okay, I can't just burst in the room. I'm going to knock her on her little bum. Right. Because she's probably right behind the door. Because that's where I heard it, like down low behind the door. So Mm -hmm. I'm going, okay, sweetie, back away from the door. Mom's going to come in. We'll talk, you know, I'm just trying to talk to her. And I open up the door slowly, slowly, slowly. My daughter's in the crib. Oh, Sound asleep. (gasps) Oh. Oh, my God, that's creepy. I got chill on that one. See, that's why it just feels like it's like a schooling thing or something. Yeah. That's what it sounds like to me. It it was literally, my heart was in my throat, and I thought, okay, holy crap, did I fall asleep in the tub? Did I imagine all this? Well, I wasn't asleep when I was standing in front of her door, because my eye was in a panic mode. Yeah, yeah. Oh, man. I would have cried. Yeah. She was in her crib. I'd crap my pants. Yeah. Uh, Like, I mean, I would crap my pants for the fact being like, how did my toddler get out, and holy... Crap! I gotta yeah. get to her before she falls down the stairs. That's my first line of yeah, thinking, and that's, right? Holy shit! And that's she's all not that, there. That's all like, I was saying yeah. is, I gotta, yeah. I gotta get to her. Then but when I realized she was sleeping, I came into my room. Mm-hmm. It was just right across, directly across from the bathroom, and I sat on the end of the bed and I thought, "Oh my god!" And I started thinking, "Okay, was I sleeping? Did I dream this? No, I distinctly heard the giggle at lower, you know, on the other side of the door." Mm-hmm. And then I started thinking yeah. about her opening up the door, and I realized this was a child with lighter colored hair. Because mm-hmm. I was in panic mode, I just thought it was my daughter. Of course, mm-hmm. my daughter's got yeah. dark, dark, super and dark hair. And could she reach the doorknob too, even? Yeah, and she was reaching up to the doorknob. Okay. So. Okay. But this, the child I remember seeing had lighter colored hair, mm-hmm. and was in a nightie. Well, my daughter was sleeping in a in a onesie. Right. So the yeah, more yeah, yeah. I calmed down and more I started thinking, okay, what the hell just happened? Mm-hmm. I realized there was things I 
I didn't pick up until I actually went, okay, what did I see? What did I hear? Well, okay, those were five uniquely crazy, scary, unjarring or unnerving stories that five people, just from five random episodes, we probably have 20 other episodes with interviews that we'll get to and share when we have filler and we don't have time to record or put something together. So I hope you enjoyed that. Uh, just a little teaser, just a little sampler as to what we've done and what we'll do. And please share with other people, let them know who we are. We again are Winnipeg's first and only paranormal podcast. And in saying that, if you'd like to reach out and tell us your story or somebody you know or, or something to that effect, please don't hesitate. Please email us at givingupthegostpodcast at gmail.com. So as we say uh, with every episode, we sign off, even though I'm speaking on, my, on Sherry's behalf, live every day like it is your last. But never give up the ghost. Bye-bye. <laughs>